Welcome to chapter two, key issue three. Why does population growth vary among regions? Why do certain regions grow and others don't? Well, in order to discover that, we're going to look at the demographic transition model. The demographic transition is the process and change of a society's population from where we're seeing a lot of people being born, a lot of people dying, and not very much growth overall, to not very many people are being born, not very many people are dying, and we're still not seeing very many people growing in population because we already have a high population because we've gone through the four stages. This is what we're going to look at overall, the demographic transition model. Stage one, we've got low growth. This stage, we have a very high birth rate, but also we've got a high death rate because people are dying. This doesn't produce any long-term natural increase. What's going on is this is way back in human history for the most part where they didn't have medicines, they didn't have technologies, maybe they were just hunters and gatherers, so living situation is not good. Sure, they're going to have a lot of babies because there's virtually no birth control, um, but people are going to die because there's no way to save them through medicines, there's no technology, there's no hospitals, they don't know how to grow food. So most of human history is in this stage, meaning back thousands of years ago, they were in this stage all the way up to about the 1800s when we switched over to stage two. So in the course of everything on this earth, stage one lasted the longest. It's only recently where we started to see population explosions. No country currently is in stage one because we've all moved to stage two. We've experienced population growth in every single country. Stage two. This is where we have rapidly declining death rates and very high birth rates, which creates a very high natural increase rate. Basically, um, people are having lots of babies, but people are living longer because we've started to integrate some technology, some medicines that allow us to live a longer period of time. Europe and North America entered stage two after 1750 because of the Industrial Revolution. This is where we started to see major improvements in manufacturing and delivering goods to the market, meaning we have the ability now to sustain a population. We can get food to larger populations. Um, we can get medicines and uh, supplies to more people. Stage two, development diffused to Africa, Asia, and Latin America around 1950s much later because of distance decay. Because Europe went through these changes first, and North America, because people from Europe went to North America. It diffused later to Africa, Asia, and Latin America because their distance decay, they're farther away. Um, but what brought it there wasn't necessarily into the Industrial Revolution, although that did diffuse there eventually. It was the Medical Revolution, where people in, in these areas saw improved medical practices, gr which greatly reduced deaths and increased the years of how long people live. Stage three, we start to see decreasing growth. This is where birth rates decline, death rates continue to go down, and the natural increase rate begins to level off. Okay, in stage two, we had people that were having lots of babies. People were living longer, but now in stage three, we start to see people not having as many babies. Why might that be? Well, it's because they're entering the workforce. We're starting to have forms of birth control. Women are becoming educated. They're going to school and getting jobs, and they're not staying home to have kids. Countries move to this stage when the birth rate drops. People are having fewer kids. Our population still tends to grow because the birth rate is higher, but it's just not as much. During stage three, people are more likely to live in cities. If they're having less kids. They don't need as many kids because they're not living on the farm and they don't need that workforce. Europe and North America moved to stage three at the first part of the 20th century. Latin America and Chile moved to stage three during the second half of the 20th century. And I don't know why I said Latin America and Chile. Oh, because other countries in South America haven't necessarily um, got there at the same pace. And then stage four where we have low growth. We've got a very low birth rate, low death rate, not really any increase rate. It actually might be decreasing. So we've got people in stage four that aren't having very many kids. They're not really dying 
in droves because we're developed and we have medicine and technologies and food that we can get to most people. So the population isn't really growing, but it's kind of dying off because if people aren't having as many kids, eventually the population gets smaller. And where we actually get into zero population growth or ZPG, this is where the birth rate equals the death rate. So our increase rate approaches zero, meaning we're not growing in population. The CBR may be, might be slightly higher, but some females die before childbearing. So that kind of balances it out. The fertility rate doesn't change the total population because we're just basically replacing each other. So it's really at about 2.1, which means there's really zero population growth. This is happening because more women are entering the labor force. They're working and they're not staying home. And we have access to a wide range of birth control, so we're not growing our population. For example, Denmark. Instead of the classic pyramid with a, a wide, fat bottom, Denmark, we've got more of a column shape, which is much more narrow. This is in stage four, which shows the young and old population are pretty much the same because there's no growth. And we see that right here, narrow column of Denmark, where really it's we're just replacing our population. Back it up to a stage three country. We're seeing Chile, who's got the wider bottom, and it starts to slowly taper off here. But definitely Cape Verde, which is one of the poorest companies, countries on the planet, we see that fat bottom where people are still having tons of kids and they're not living quite as long. What's up with declining birth rates? Well, this occurs for a couple of reasons. Number one, it occurs through education. If you're in sub-Saharan Africa, there's not a lot of schools. Women aren't going to school. They're staying home and they're having lots of babies because we don't have birth control either. So because of these two reasons, contraception, contraception meaning birth control, we don't have ways to stop us from having babies, and we're not going to school. Um, so in these areas where we don't have schools and we don't have contraception, we're going to have a lot of kids. As opposed to the United States, where equally, for the most part, we've got women going to school and getting jobs, and we've got available lots of forms of birth control. Thomas Malthus, speaking of overpopulation, he said in, in 1798 that population growth would overrun the food supply, meaning we're going to have too many people and we're not going to be able to feed them. He claimed that population increases geometrically and the food supply increases arithmetically. So as we increase across the globe, food supply would only increase in number. There's people that agreed with him. They're called Neo-Malthusians. They agree, they agree with Malthus, but think the situation is actually worse because we have so much more population in, in the recent years. They've seen population grow exponentially, and they, they say there's no way we can grow food for all these people. Now all countries have been in stage two where they've experienced lots of this growth and we have lots of technology, meaning people are living longer. So there's no way we can keep up. They see the world population growth is actually reducing resources not just food population. And that's why it's worse, because it's not just food. It's uh, oxygen in the air as we dump uh, chlorofluorocarbons in and, and um, forms of petroleum that are dispersed in the air. We're cutting down the rainforest. We're reducing our oxygen levels. We're using up the available fresh water. So Neo-Malthusians, they're worried about food and every other resource. But then there's also critics to Thomas Malthus. They consider that resources are expanding. Well, perhaps we're going to run out of oil. Well, critics say then the earth is always making more oil. Maybe not as fast, but we're still going to find more. They also say that the larger population is not something to be afraid of. It's something that actually stimulates the ability to grow more food. Because if you have one farmer, he can only grow a certain amount of food. But if you have 10 farmers, they can grow more food. So what we need to do is just share our resources. So Thomas Malthus... That's pretty big in, in geography because he stated something that was to, to be a big concern for everyone on this earth. But there's a debate on how we've reached this um, equilibrium on how we can provide food for everyone. Some people say, you know, we've got to find a solution to all this huge population. Other people say, well, we kind of have fixed it. We, we, we're using genetically modified crops. 
Um, we're using pesti pesticides and herbicides and fertilizers that help us to grow more and different cultivating techniques to grow the food. Um, but then again, other people say, well, those GMOs, they actually are damaging to the environment. So that's not good either. It's a fun debate. So in reality, population has grown, but food production has increased rapidly as well. Yes, people were worried about running out of food, but apparently we have the means to grow it. For example, in India, we have increased rice and wheat production, which occurred faster than the population grew because they used different growing techniques such as higher yield seeds and the cultivation of more land. Basically, they came up with seeds that they genetically enhanced and they used more land and they were able to feed their population. And you can see here on the graphic that rice and wheat went up further than the population. Um, so the only concern would be are genetically modified crops good or do they do more damage down the line? We look at Japan, another example. In 2010, Japan had 127 million. It's estimated that by 2050, they're only going to have 95 million. So unlike the USA, Japan discourages immigration. So we're seeing their population actually decline. Here they are in 1950, they got a nice traditional pyramid shape. This is after World War II, so they've got a lot of people having babies. In 2010, though, we switch over and see that not that many people are having babies. We've got an older population that we've got to take care of as they get older, and our workforce is shrinking. This is projected here because Japan's like, okay, we're not letting any different people come in. We don't want immigration, so our population, younger years, is going to be very small. How are they going to take care of this aging population? That's a concern. As we look to the future, the demographic transition, we might see a possible stage five where we've gone beyond stage four, which is very low growth, to an actual decline in population. Because if we have continued low birth rate, our older population begins to increase as they die. So it's actually going to start being negative. And when we look at countries like Russia, you're actually seeing a negative increase rate. So Perhaps this is a good thing because if we're worried about population on the planet, there, there wouldn't be as many people. But at the same time, we're like, well, we don't have a workforce that can take care of the older generation. Another concern there. China and India. These are the world's two most populous countries. You put them together and they add up one third of the total population over all the earth. India, after 1947, this is after World War II, this is after uh, the British Empire has left and they gained their independence. They start rapid growth. Um, so they had so many people having babies there that they rapidly became overpopulated. So in 1952, they began a national family planning program where they utilized things such as birth control, abortions, and sterilizations. And of course, there's controversy with these last two here. But these are things that they have done to control what's going on because they are the second most populated country. And the most populated is China. In 1980, they instigated the one-child policy, which prohibits marriage in people that are in their early 20s. They say they need to have a permit to have children. And they hand out freely contraceptives, which is birth control. They have free abortions and sterilizations. Again, their rationalization is that population is so large and people are having so many babies that they've got to come up with any means of taking care of that. Again, there's controversy with that. They're more relaxed, more relaxed now on these policies, but they still have a large payment that you must give if you want to have more than one child. That's our look at key issue three.